Let's be honest. Have you ever asked Claude Code or any AI agent to design a clean professional UI and got the same boring website? It's not just you. I've been using Claude Code for over half a year now, hundreds of hours, and here's the good news. You can fix this. In this video, I'll show you three workflows that turn Claude Code into a surprisingly good UI designer. And if you're using other AI agents, these workflows will help you there too. For our demonstration, I'll use alldevneeds.com, completely free developer tools you can use. All right, let's dive into the first method. This is what we're going to build. Don't worry, I'll explain everything. We're going to create three sub agents. The first one is the feature architect. He'll take care of all the planning. When he's done, he'll hand the work over to the tool implementer. And after the implementation is ready, the quality assurance sub agent will jump in and make sure everything actually follows the plan. But before we build any of these, we need to understand what Claude sub agents are and why we should use them in the first place. Sub agents are basically pre configured AI personalities that Claude Code can delegate tasks to. There are three reasons to use them. First, each sub agent has its own context window, so it can fully focus on the task without getting its mind polluted by everything else happening in the project. Second, we can choose a different model, different tools, and even different MCPs for each agent. In our example, the feature architect will use the Opus model because it's much smarter for planning, while the tool implementer can use Sonnet, which is way cheaper and totally fine for execution. And the third reason, which is my personal favorite, is that you can reuse them later. Next time you just write the prompt and the whole workflow wakes up instantly. They already know what to do. After you create sub-agents, Claude Code will automatically pick the relevant one based on what you're trying to do. What I usually do is simply mention the agent in the prompt just to make sure Claude picks the right one. To create new agents, you can use the agents command or you can just describe what you need, which tools it should have, and Claude Code will generate the agent for you. Sub-agents live in the agents folder and each one gets its own MD file. You can also configure them globally so they are not tied to a specific project. Let's take a look at the feature architect sub-agent. It has a name and a description that helps Claude understand when to use it. For example, use this agent when starting a new feature for alldevneeds.com. It analyzes requirements, explores similar existing tools, designs component architecture, and creates a detailed implementation plan. Invokes the design skill for visual consistency, used before any code is written. After that, we have the tool section. You can add read, write, edit, web search, and more. It's also possible to add MCPs. Here you can see it has the playwright MCP. We'll talk about that later. Then we have the model. I chose Opus for this agent because planning requires deeper reasoning and I want the architect to think as clearly as possible. And you can also set the color, which is what you'll see inside the terminal. There's also additional text that explains and expands on what this sub agent does. So that's our first sub agent. We also have the tool implementer, which uses Sonnet by default and the quality assurance sub agent. Great, we have our executors, but we still need to explain what the project is about and what actually matters to us. For that, we're going to use Claude skills. By the way, I forgot to introduce myself. I help developers turn AI into real workflows, so sub and like, it really helps me provide more value for you. So, what are Claude skills? Skills are folders that include instructions, scripts, and resources that Claude can load whenever they're needed. But why use Claude skills and not just simple MD files? First, sub agents can use them. And even more than that, you can guide the sub-agent to use a specific skill. In our example, each sub-agent has a short paragraph that points it to the relevant files. Second, skills can include files that aren't only text, they can have scripts, images, anything that helps shape your workflow. I like to think about it like onboarding a junior developer. You give them everything they need and they pull the right info when the moment comes. And last, Anthropic, the company behind Claude Code, released an article that says exactly that, improving front-end design through skills. In this article, they highly encourage us to create a dedicated design skill that includes several files, typography, motion, animation, and micro interactions, color and theme, backgrounds. I also added general, which takes the general instructions from Claude.md and puts all the relevant info for that skill in this MD file. For example, in colortheme.md, you can see the properties for light and dark mode, which is info I want every new feature to comply with. So how does a Claude skill actually look? Each Claude skill has a skill.md file, which includes the name, the description, and the allowed tools. Just like sub-agents, Claude decides when to use a Claude skill, so the description is really important. 
And again, I recommend mentioning the Claude skill in your prompt whenever you want to make sure Claude loads it. Only the skill.md file is loaded at first. Inside that file, we reference all the other files and Claude loads them on demand. For example, if the tool implementer has a question about typography, he'll use the design Claude skill, and that Claude skill will point him to load typography.md into context. Claude skills are great because they help our sub agents understand exactly what we want. But since we're talking about design here, they also need eyes. That's why each sub-agent has permission to use the Playwright MCP, which is a popular open source framework for end-to-end -end web testing and automation. In the GitHub repository of this MCP, you can even see options for running on different devices, which is super useful. So, to wrap it up, here's what we have at the end of the first method. Three sub-agents and a Claude skills folder, with a skill.md file and all the recommended design files. This system lets you generate new features easily. Just remember to mention the Claude skills and the sub-agents. But you're probably wondering, isn't it a lot of work to write all these files? That's exactly why I use the prompt to generate them for me. If you want me to share the prompts, the sub-agents, or the Claude skills, let me know in the comments. But what if you already have a mock-up or a design ready? That's where our next method comes in. Having a clear output in mind as its pros and cons, the pro is obvious. You know exactly what the result should look like, but the clearer you are about the final vision, the more frustrated you'll get when the model starts hallucinating or drifting away from that vision. That's why we're going to set up a different system, we'll create a new sub-agent called Design Implementer. This agent takes your input, it can be a Figma design, a mock-up, or even just an image, and then uses the tool implementer to execute it. And of course, at the end, the quality assurance sub-agent will check everything. In oldevneeds.com, whenever I come up with a design, this is the sub-agent I use. It comes with this description. One important note here, the more specific you are, the better the result. So if you have different designs for different screens, add both designs to the prompt. Don't leave gaps for the model to fill on its own. This issue is a result of distributional convergence. Big fancy term, but the idea is simple. AI models copy the patterns they've seen the most during training. And because the internet is full of super safe generic designs that everyone uses, those are the designs the model thinks you want. So if you don't guide Claude, it will always go back to the most common, most average look. That's why we get all those purple AI websites we all hate. But what if you don't have a specific design and you're open to suggestions? In that case, you want the model to be creative. In their article, Anthropic gives a prompt that helps you avoid the same boring designs the model usually generates. I'll put a link to it in the description. But what I find most useful in these open-minded scenarios is this. Ask the model to create three optional designs and then choose the one you like most. In general, asking for options is a great way to get better results. Claude Code Skill is a powerful feature, but what's the difference between Claude Skill and Claude Custom Prompts? Luckily, you can watch this video to find out. Until we meet again, build workflows, not chaos.